So in this question we're told we have a rough plane which is inclined to the horizontal at an angle of alpha where tan alpha is equal to 3 over 4. So we're told that we have a particle of mass m and it is placed on this plane and it is projected up the plane. When the question says projected up a line of greatest slope of the plane this just means that it is going on the slope as opposed to going above the slope or below the slope. It is moving on the slope. We're then told that the coefficient of friction between the particle and the plane is mu and we're given some information about its movement. We're told that the particle moves up the plane with a constant deceleration of 4 over 5 g, where g is our gravitational constant. And what we're asked to do in part a, we are asked to find the value of mu. So writing this down, mu, and that is the coefficient of friction. So to help us understand this question better, I'm going to draw a diagram. So firstly, we have our horizontal. So this line here is our ground, and then we're going to have our slope. So we have our slope here, and then we're going to fill our information in. So we know that this angle here is going to be alpha. And then we're told, just in the interim, that tan alpha is equal to 3 over 4. And we can easily work out cos alpha and sine alpha by drawing right angle triangle. So if we draw our right angle triangle just like this, we'll have that our right angle is there and alpha is here. We know that from Sokotoa, just write that out so we remember that, Sokotoa, we have that for tan, it's going to be O over A. So we can say the opposite is 3 and the adjacent is 4. So fill that into our diagram. We have 4, which is A, and the opposite is 3. And then we know that H, we can use either the rule of the 3, 4, 5 triangle or Pythagoras to work out that this H is going to be 5. So we can therefore say that for cos alpha, we have A over H, which is going to be 4 over 5. And then for sine alpha, we're going to have over H, which is going to be 3 over 5. So this is going to become useful later in the question, and we'll now go back to filling in our diagram. So I'm going to draw in a box, which is going to be, in our case, our particle, and this is just going to make things easy to visualise. So we know that there's going to be a downward force, and that is going to be gravity. And this is going to be the mass of the particle, multiplied by a gravitational constant. And then we're going to have a perpendicular force, which is upwards from our box there. So write in perpendicular. And then we will have our parallel force here, as well as friction. So writing that down, we'll have parallel plus friction. So we can see here also that our box is going to be moving here. So the movement is in this direction upwards. It is still moving upwards, but we do know it is decelerating at a rate of 4 over 5 g. So then the next step for us is going to be to write some equations out. So we know the perpendicular force. Let's call this F1. So we're going to have that our perpendicular force F1 is going to be equal to mg cos alpha. And then we know that our force F2 so let's call F2 to be the downward force, so call that F2. So that is going to be friction plus the parallel force. So therefore, we can use the information we have to further our ideas of our two forces, F1 and F2. So we know that F1, we don't know M, but what we do know, we do know that cos alpha is 4 over 5, so we'll have the, the first force here denoted by F1 is going to be 4 over 5 multiplied by mg and then we know that we can write friction as mu multiplied by our perpendicular force so mu F1 and then we know that our parallel force is going to be mg sine alpha and then we can do the same here we can rewrite F1 in here and then we can also replace sine alpha with 3 over 5 so we'll then have mu lots of 4 over 5 mg and then to that we're going to add sine alpha which is 3 over 5 mg 
So the next step for us is going to be to equate these. So we know that 4 over 5 mg is going to be equal to mu multiplied by 4 over 5 mg. And then we add 3 over 5 mg. So then we can see here we have mg, mg, mg. So they all cancel out. So we'll write that in here. mg cancels out. And that therefore leaves us with something that's slightly simpler. So we'll have 4 over 5 is equal to 4 over 5 mu plus 3 over 5. And then therefore we can then rearrange this for mu. So we'll have that 4 over 5 mu is going to be equal to 4 over 5 minus 3 over 5, which is going to be then equal to 1 over 5. And then therefore, mu is going to be equal to 1 over 5 multiplied by 5 over 4. And then this comes out, we see our 5s cancel, which means that mu is going to be equal to 1 over 4. So therefore, we've worked out mu, the coefficient of friction. This question was worth 6 marks, and we receive our first mark for knowing that our perpendicular force was equal to mg cos alpha. And then we get our second mark for being able to work out the parallel force. We then get our third mark for equating these two forces. We then get our fourth mark for knowing to use that the friction was equal to mu multiplied by the perpendicular force. So we'll just add that one back in there. And then we receive our fifth mark for producing an equation in terms of mu and knowing to solve for mu and then we receive our sixth and final mark for concluding with the correct answer that mu is equal to 1 over 4. So in part b of this question, we're told that the particle comes to rest at the point A on the plane. And we're asked to determine whether the particle will remain at A, and we're to carefully justify our answer. So we're just going to read our diagram. So we'll have our horizontal here, and then we have our slope, as you can see here. We know that the angle is still alpha. And we now have our box is going to be here. I'm not going to annotate it in as much detail as before. But this time we know that when the box is at rest, friction will push upwards. And our parallel force will push in the other direction. So that's our parallel force. So we'll just note that down. At rest, friction will be in the upward direction. So that basically what we need to do is we need to compare the friction and the parallel force to see which one is going to be greater. And then from this we can see will it remain at rest or will it move in some direction. So we know that the friction is going to be equal to mu multiplied by our perpendicular force which is mg cos alpha. And we know that mu is 1 over 4 and we know that cos alpha is 4 over 5, so we'll have 1 over 4 multiplied by 4 over 5 mg, and that is going to be equal to 1 over 5 mg. And then we have that the parallel force is going to be equal to, and the same as the previous question, mg sine alpha, and we know that sine alpha is equal to 3 over 5, so we have 3 over 5 mg. And therefore, we can see that we now have two terms which we can compare. So we have that 3 over 5 mg is going to be greater than 1 over 5 mg. So therefore, we can see that the parallel force is greater than the friction. So writing this down, we have that parallel force is greater than the frictional force. So therefore, the particle will start to move down the slope and it won't remain at A. So in this part of the question there was two marks available and we received our first mark for comparing our frictional force with our parallel force and we then received our second mark for using this comparison and coming to an appropriate conclusion and that was that the particle will no longer remain at the point A.